Hello there guys and welcome to another one of my reviews. Today we are talking about the brand new BMW 3 Series, the G20 generation. BMW has been making the 3 Series for about 40 years. Now across this long production span, the, the 3 Series has usually been the king of the segment. Uh, most of its rivals have always been trying and uh, trying really hard to keep up with it especially when it comes to the driving dynamics of the car that's what separated the 3 series from everything else when it first came out it was a sporty car it was a car that wasn't supposed to drive that well and bmw has tried to keep that pedigree alive over the years of course customer demands have changed and over the years bmw started to tone it down a little some fans have been disappointed about it some have been glad about it because not everyone wants to have their kidneys shattered everyone every time they go to the market so the new 3 series is built atop the car architecture you probably heard of it uh, a number of times it's the new architecture that allows bmw to share parts in between various models and save costs and improve them all together so today we have the 3 series the 5 series the 6 series gt the 7 series, the 8 series, and the SUV alternatives all built on this modular car platform that allows BMW to fit the cars with any type of drivetrain without changing to a different assembly line, which is very important. I know it's a bit technical, but trust me on this, it's very important. The car architecture also allows BMW to shave some weight of its cars, so according to the PR, the press release uh, BMW published about this car, uh, it is lighter by up to 55 kilos now that depends a lot on the model on the engine and on the kit installed on it so don't expect every car to be lighter by 55 kilos but that difference doesn't really matter because you won't really feel it inside what you will feel while driving this car is the chassis which is now stiffer by 50 percent and that's a big number 50 percent increased uh, stiffness does translate into better body control and this car really really drives well now the car i'm testing is just a 320d it doesn't even have the m sport package it has the sport line package so it's not an athlete per se but it is the best selling car in bmw's 3 series range and it has been for years and i'm guessing the new 320d will keep this trend alive i i still think it's going to be the best seller despite all the trouble diesel engines are facing in Europe. So the reason I'm saying that is because the 320D has a good mix between uh, driving dynamics and uh, fuel efficiency. Uh, it sips considerably uh, less fuel than you would expect. And I'm supposed to mention here that this car is brand new. It hasn't been run in into. So, uh, I'm expecting the fuel consumption to go even lower as miles pile up. So um, at the moment I'm on the highway, I have an average speed of about 60 miles an hour in the dash. So the fuel consum consumption so shown by the car is 4.7 liters per 100 kilometers covered. I drove this car inside the city as well and it showed a fuel consumption of at most 8 liters per 100 kilometers, but most of the time it was under 7 liters. So that is incredible for a brand new car with a 2 liter diesel engine with 190 horsepower that can do 100 kilometers an hour in under 7 seconds. Now, this acceleration time is not back-breaking, but it is enough to get you going in a hurry. Furthermore, the car has 400 Newton meters of torque along those 190 horsepower. So on the highway, you won't have any issues uh, doing some, uh, I don't know, fast overtakings at speeds over 100 kilometers an hour. I actually tested this earlier before and um, can say that I am completely satisfied with the results. If you want to go a lot faster, BMW will, sh will sell you a 330i right now, which comes with a 2-liter 4-cylinder engine. 
it has 255 horsepower but it will also sell you a six-cylinder petrol engine in the M340i later on which has over 360 horsepower in Europe and about 390 in uh, the US because the US cars don't have to come with a uh, gasoline particulate filter so dynamically the car handles well this car has the standard suspension it doesn't have adaptive dampers even though BMW has been talking about its new dampers that are fitted as standard in every car which basically are a two-in-one solution uh, at the top of the damper you have a small section that changes its rate depending on the weight inside the car so let's say you're all alone in the 3 series driving around and uh, the car is a, a bit the dampers are not as stiff as when you uh, add a, a bit more weight inside so it works it works really well the steering is not offering a lot of feedback to be honest but you can't expect that anymore these days in in you know run-of-the-mill cars but you know what the front wheels are doing at all times so that's that's good news um, so other than that I wouldn't recommend the 19 inch wheels uh, like this car has especially on the standard suspension because it is a bit stiff it's a bit on the stiffer side so if you want something a bit more comfortable uh, maybe go for the adaptive M suspension or maybe the C-Class because the C-Class still remains the most comfortable and most luxurious car in this segment however the BMW 3 Series did go up in the world by quite a, a lot recently thanks to its new interior design now the F30 model that came before this was widely criticized that because of the interior it had some people said it was way too conservative way too old hasn't been changed in forever and so on so the new 3 series has a new interior that looks great you've probably seen it in my videos or other videos um, published so far because it looks basically the same as in the x5 or the 8 series the only difference is uh, the materials used whereas in the x5 or the uh, 8 series you have uh, metal glass and so on in the in the 3 series you get plastic but it is a very good mix of plastic that feels nice to the touch and the fit and finish is up to par as usual it is uh, probably the best in the biz right now the dash gets covered in Sensatec which is like a fake leather it has some fake stitching over here um, but other than that I really like the interior it's really comfortable the seats are comfortable and supportive um, and they're, they, they're not even the uh, most expensive seats, they're just the standard ones you get. The interior in this car is dressed in Vernasca leather, uh, which is a new type of leather introduced by BMW. It's supposed to replace the Dakota leather we had in the F30. It feels nice to the touch and it's probably going to be well, withstanding the, the test of time in terms of ruptures and, uh, you know, wear, wearing. Um, so, what else can I tell you about the 3 Series? You have a lot more new technology inside so you get the new live cockpit uh, professional uh, system inside which has a new digital instrument cluster and a new uh, iDrive screen while the iDrive screen does take a while to get used to it has a bit of a longer learning curve than the old version um, that's mostly because you can now configure the screen in a number of ways it's now no longer an infotainment screen but more like an, a smartphone screen you can adjust the tiles on the screen you can adjust what they are displaying and so on so it is it does take a bit more to get used to but that's not really a problem because bmw also introduced uh the new bmw personal intelligent assistant which basically is supposed to be a sort of siri or um Alexa from Amazon uh, for your car and can do various tasks for you for example you can tell it to adjust the, the temperature on the driver's side to a cer cer certain value you can adjust the temperature on the passenger side to a different value just by telling it and there's there isn't a fixed command for that you just tell it listen BMW I'm cold and the car will adjust the temperature to I don't know, 23 degrees uh, you can tell it I'm bored and it will switch to sport mode 
and so on. So it does have a couple of neat tricks that make using the iDrive system a bit uh, irrelevant at some point. The problem is it doesn't all it doesn't get your commands like all the time. So it can get a bit frustrating when it doesn't understand what you're saying. But you know that's the same with Siri and uh, other um, voice recognition systems. So that being said. Um, I also have a gripe with the new instrument cluster because it has the speedometer on the right side, uh, the speedometer on the left side, and the ref counter on the right side, and the ref counter goes counterclockwise, which can be a bit confusing at first, but then again, you get the head-up display, which displays everything you need to know. Um, so it's really not that big of an issue, but I have to uh, nitpick sometimes, you know? I have to be extra critical because otherwise you guys are going to say uh, that I am way too lenient on BMW. The car did increase in size. It has a boot that's the, roughly the same size as the A4 and the C-Class. So you can store a lot of stuff in there. There's a big wide opening that allows you to get a lot of stuff in there. Uh, also inside the cabin you get more room in the back. I can fit in the front uh, having my, my seat adjusted to my preferred driving position, I can sit in the back and I have uh, I have room. There's not, not, notably more room than uh, in the F30 model. Furthermore, it is way more quieter in here than on the old version because you have double glazed windows up front and uh, the windscreen is um, also uh, better soundproof. Most of the noise you hear right now uh, or on the highway will come from the, the wheels, the tires. So overall, it is a big improvement. The 320D will probably be the best selling car in the range, even though, as I said, diesel has, has its issues these days uh, in Europe. And um, that's about it. If you have any additional questions about the car, I am more than glad to answer them all in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.